Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 15th of July. India provides free COVID booster doses to celebrate 75 years of independence. Ranil Vikramasinghe is sworn in as interim president. Sri Lankans welcome Gotabaya's resignation. And crisis hit Pakistan slashes fuel prices to pass on global drop to consumers. And now for all the details. All Indian adults will be administered free booster shots of coronavirus at all government centers for 75 days starting Friday with an aim of boosting the uptake of precautionary doses. The special vaccination drive is a part of the government's campaign Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, celebrations to mark 75 years of India's independence. India's Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia on Friday launched the 75-day free vaccination campaign for all adults, COVID vaccination Amrit Mahotsav, in capital New Delhi, and appealed to the masses to get the free dose so as to ensure protection against COVID-19. This special vaccination drive is a part of the celebration for Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav and aims to provide free precaution dose for all adults' eligible population at government COVID vaccination centres with an aim to increase the uptake of precautionary dose. The objective is also to speed up the vaccination process in the country. The country of all of the 18 to 18 years of age is that the Azadi Ke Amrut Mahosav Ke Aosar Par 75 Dien Tak Chal Raha Is Abhyan Me Aap Bhi Mupta Tika Lagaye Or Covid Ke Saam Ne आप अपनी सुरक्षा सुनिश्चित करिए अंडर द नेशन वाइड वैक्सीनेशन ड्राइव 1.89 मिलियन कोविड वैक्सीन डोजेस वर एडमिनिस्टर्ड इन द लास्ट 24 आवर्स द टोटल नंबर ऑफ वैक्सीन जैप्ड टिल डेट रीच 1.99 बिलियन मीनवाइल इंडिया रिपोर्टेड ओवर 20000 न्यू कोविड केसेस फॉर द सेकंड डे इन अ रो ऑन फ्राइडे एज इट लॉक्ड 20038 इंफेक्शंस इन द लास्ट 24 आवर्स the country had breached the 20,000 mark after 145 days, logging 20,139 cases on Thursday. The active cases in the country have gone up to 139,073. Amid the pandemic, India on Thursday reported its first confirmed case of monkeypox, a 35-year-old man with a history of travel to the Middle East. Southern Kerala State Health Minister Vina George told reporters late on Thursday that the man was in stable condition and had been isolated at a hospital. Monkeypox endemic in parts of Africa is a viral disease that causes flu-like symptoms and skin lesions. Around 60 countries in which monkeypox is not endemic have reported outbreaks of the disease with confirmed cases crossing 10,500. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe took oath as the interim president on Friday, a day after Gotabaya Rajapaksa submitted his resignation from the post, fleeing to Singapore to escape a public uprising over deepening economic crisis. Sri Lankans who blame the powerful Rajapaksa family and allies for runaway inflation and corruption have welcomed the resignation. They are now awaiting whom the parliament will elect as new president next week. Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Ranil Vikrame Singhe was sworn in as the acting president on Friday after the parliament speaker accepted Gotabaya Rajapaksa's resignation from the post. Ranil Vikrame Singhe had already taken on the role after Rajapaksa fled the country on Wednesday following a public uprising over the country's worst economic crisis in 70 years. Vikrame Singhe said he will stick to constitutional process and establish law and order until the parliament elects a new president on July 20. Sri Lankans who blame the powerful Rajapaksa family and allies for runaway inflation and corruption have welcomed Gotabaya's resignation. They are now waiting to know who the new president will be.
Uh, we won everything and uh, we are so happy today that he has resigned. And uh, we feel that uh, when we when the people come together, we can do everything. We, we, are, we are the real power in this country. Dozens of rickshaws and vehicles could be seen snaking along city streets near petrol stations on Friday, some having already queued days for a small quantity of petrol. The country of 22 million has nearly run out of dollars for imports of fuel and other essentials and defaulted on foreign loans. Headline inflation in Sri Lanka hit 54.6% last month and the central bank has warned that it could rise to 70% in coming months. Sri Lanka had begun preliminary discussions with the International Monetary Fund about a potential bailout loan, but these have been interrupted by the latest government chaos. Pakistan has slashed fuel prices to pass on a decline in global prices to inflation hit consumers. The government had raised the levies on petrol and diesel about a fortnight ago to fulfill IMF conditions for a bailout package. This comes as the country facing an economic turmoil has reached a staff level agreement with the IMF which would bring in over 1 billion US dollars upon final approval. Pakistan has announced a decrease in fuel prices to pass on a decline in global prices to inflation hit consumers. With Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif saying the government will continue to provide relief as soon as it has financial cushion to do so. Earlier in an address to the nation on Thursday, Sharif said, we raised prices due to rising international prices and the common man suffered due to it. We had no option and had to take unpopular decisions, he added. The government about a fortnight ago raised the levies on petrol and diesel sales to fulfill conditions set by the International Monetary Fund for the resumption of a bailout package. Now prices of petrol and diesel have been reduced by nearly rupees 18 and rupees 40 per liter respectively. The IMF on Thursday reached a staff level agreement with Pakistan that would pave the way for disbursement of 1.17 billion dollars if approved by its executive board. Pakistan is experiencing 13 year high inflation reaching 21.3 percent last month and is in dire need of external funding with foreign reserves as low as $10 billion. Shehbaz Sharif blamed the previous government of ousted Premier Imran Khan did not honour the agreement it reached with the IMF and had frozen the fuel prices. They made matters worse, he said. Moving on. Local residents and organisers of the recently concluded Shandur Polo Festival in Gilgit, Baltistan have lamented that there were no proper arrangements and much needed support for the annual event by the Pakistan government. They said Islamabad has failed to promote the local culture, which can boost tourism in the region. Locals and the organizers of the famous Shandur Polo Festival in Gilgit, Baltistan lamented that the Pakistan government made no arrangements and provided no support to them for the annual event in the illegally occupied region. Organizers said thousands of tourists used to attend the festival, but this time only locals were present as earlier the authorities used to arrange for big tent cities and manage the cleanliness. Locals expressed worries that the garbage at the event site will remain unattended in the area usually used as pasturage. Uh, Residents said they have expressed their helplessness on a number of occasions in the past, but that has barely changed the stance of Pakistan towards the region. They blame that Islamabad has pushed Gilgit Baltistan into the most neglected, backward, and impoverished region. In news from Afghanistan, Taliban's Ministry of Interior Affairs has asked all Afghan National Defense and Security Forces who are in India and other countries to return to Afghanistan. 
Afghan media Tolo News quoted Abdul Nafi Takor, the spokesman of the ministry, as saying that these military students will be assigned to the country's security and defense institutions based on their expertise, adding that Afghan soldiers in India are the assets of Afghanistan. Reports suggest that officials of the Afghanistan embassy in India said that military students have not decided yet to return to the country due to security threats. During the past 11 months, more than 200 military students have completed their studies in India and since 2005, India has provided educational opportunities for hundreds of Afghan soldiers. Afghanistan's economy collapsed last year and thousands fled the country after US and other foreign forces withdrew and the Islamist Taliban took over the country. Many left their homeland to immediate neighbors, including Iran, for better opportunities. Moving on, Tibetan spiritual leader the Dalai Lama on Friday said that India and China must solve their border dispute through talks and peaceful means as use of military force is outdated. His remarks came as he embarked on a visit to India's Ladakh region, where India and China are also expected to begin a military-level meeting on July 17 to resolve the ongoing border row. Tibetan spiritual leader the Dalai Lama on Friday said that India and China must solve their border dispute through talks and peaceful means, as use of military force is outdated. The remarks by the Dalai Lama came as he embarked on a month-long visit to India's Ladakh region after a brief stopover in Jammu. India and China are expected to begin the 16th Corps commander-level meeting in Ladakh to resolve boundary disputes on July 17. Both the countries have been engaged in a border standoff since 2020. That also led to a deadly clash in Ladakh's Galwan Valley, which killed 20 Indian soldiers and at least four Chinese troops. India and China, most populated two nations and neighbor. Sooner or later, you have to solve this problem through talk, through peaceful means. Uh, use military force is outdated. Earlier on Thursday, responding to a question on China objecting to his visit to Ladakh, the 87-year-old Nobel Peace Laureate had said that the majority of people in China have realized that he is not seeking independence within China, but meaningful autonomy and preservation of Tibetan Buddhist culture. A young female artist in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir has started the revival of cultural pottery items by making paper mache art designs on them. She wishes to take her art to a global level and encourage other artists as well. Shafia Shafi, a 26-year-old artist from Srinagar city in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir, has started revival of traditional pottery items like spinning wheel, goblet drum, Kashmiri kangri, and other cultural items by making paper mache art designs on them. She has showcased her talent at the national level with her paintings and murals depicting the life of women and folk tales. Being a freelance artist, she also holds a master's degree in psychology from the Kashmir University. She said it struck her a few years ago that she should combine the contemporary art designs to revive the traditional art forms. I was doing paintings on it, but I had a strike for a few years that the traditional things, the cultural things, are going to be finished. It's pottery or paper machine. My main focus was on these things. So I had an idea that I should create something to mix them together. Shafia said she's getting a very good response from all over the world via social media for this revival of cultural items and people are supporting her in this initiative. She said she wants to take this art and culture to a global level and encourage other artists as well. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.